everyone, welcome to Movement and Me, an initiative that is designed for budding artists across the world who wish to pursue their career in art. I'm your host Deharika and on this show you will hear artists talk about their lives and the choices they had to make in pursuit of arts. We will also get to use some tips and key learnings from the lives of these artists along with a detailed discussion on their areas of interest. So quickly hop on to a journey into the world of arts along with us. Today's guest is Miss Meha Sen. She's a performer, choreographer and an entrepreneur. She has been a senior instructor and choreographer at the Dance Works between the years 2000 and 2012 and has been associated with the Imperial Fernando Ballet Company ever since. She is now the artistic director of her company, Dance Art, which, she, which gained popularity since 2018. The company offers Russian ballet, jazz, and contemporary classes for different age groups. Welcome, Meha. Hi, Neharika. Thank you for having me here. Hi, it's Meha. I am glad. I am glad you agreed to do this with us. I'm so excited to have you on board. It's a pleasure to be and talking with you. It's going to be a great conversation and I'm sure there will be so much to discover and share our experiences while we talk. I am excited myself. So let's get started, Meha. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit about your journey so far. How did you end up with dance and where did it all begin? So my love with dance started very young. I think I must be at the age of six when my dad was actually uh, putting me, trying to put me in a good hobby class. And he was putting me in sports. He was putting me in music class and that and also dance. And that's what stuck with me. I really enjoyed at that time and uh, the passion did not really come in that early. So it was just something that I loved doing, something that I connected with at a very young age. So I, he put me in a Odissi class and I was doing very well. And I actually did a you know, couple of years under a good, you know, famous guru. And uh, later on, it, it, then somewhere I lost track because of course studies and everything. I went into sports and then also did uh, like, so I played uh, a la national level sports. I am a volleyball player and everything. So my journey with sports started there. But doing that, I came back again to dancing uh, because just with the music and the feel and you know how exciting it is just to be on stage excited me and uh, that's how I told my dad that maybe I just want to join Bollywood and of course he was at the first thing his reaction was like why Bollywood and I was like because I wanted to be a Karishma Kapoor and dance with Salman Khan and that was like a teenage, you know, dream. And that's how it started. But my dad very nicely explained me and he told me, so why do you like acting or do you like dancing? And that's when I realized that, yes, dancing is what really is, you know, something that I would like to pursue. So I think around the class uh, 10th grade, I was very sure that I wanted to be this dancer and I wanted to be this choreographer. And at that time, my friends were actually wanting to be a doctor or an engineer and, you know, just travel abroad, do their masters. But I was so clear and they used to laugh at me at that time that you want to be a choreographer. And I was like, why not? It's such an amazing, you know, thing. You can just create your own moves. So I was very clear about it. And that's when dance works happened. And then there was no turning back. It just kept, I've been never stopped. It's just been going on. And how a serious hobby turned into a passion and it's still there. It was 
it was like it's i'm still in love so this it's just going on oh my god that is amazing um i think this is exciting for everybody to hear that you apparently are a national level volleyball player i didn't know that and that is amazing so um i think the next question then i would like to ask you is how did you know that of course being a national level volleyball player how did you realize that it was not volleyball that you really wanted to pursue because you actually gained quite a lot of you know achievements in that field and and yeah and you know go with dance instead i mean what kind of prompted that shift of course you liked dance and you keep talking about the fact that you had you took a break because of studies which i think everybody around to you know during this time seems to be going through this idea of education education somewhere being more important or you know somewhere having this idea that education trumps dance or you know arts particularly is there even in the country today so i would i have a question for you and this is again like how did you move from volleyball to dance it's just very interesting so uh so of course like you know uh so this i think happened because my family business was like my dad is a you know sound engineer and he has his own studio and he is actually someone who has been into like you can say directly or indirectly he's been uh, you know he was recording artists like yani and he used to record big he used to do shows so whole of my family was already into a show business so we my dad used to record like shubha mudgel he used to record uh, even all kind of artists so i have been seeing so my dad clearly uh, you know i was there in touch with the limelight and this kind of you know uh, you can say uh, like the artist world i was there but i was too young of course to understand the you know like the main uh, you know like i never really entered entered that world but i would always be surrounded by these artists at a very young age so of course like every girl i was also a very tomboyish kind of a girl you know person in school so i would like to go and beat up boys play football and that was one side of me and uh, so sports came also very naturally to me i was also like i was good in sports throughout and yes and definitely you know uh, like you know it's it said that you know in our ballet also that you know strong girls become ballerinas so it it's a saying so i think somewhere sports really got me that team spirit and not giving up all those things came in very naturally when i played sports the shift happened of course when i realized that you know this was something that i was getting connected to again and again because it was there in my environment very naturally when i used to go to my dad's studio i would see so many artists coming in like ravi shankar was there recording shubha mudgil was there recording all the big artists were always there you know they were like my aunties and my uncles you know doing recording so but because somewhere it did impacted me and it pulled me also uh, also dancing i don't know like uh, dancing was something i felt so from within like and because like i told you bollywood played a very important part because i used to see karishma kapoor and you know then rithik roshan came in and i'm sure rithik roshan has impacted uh, you know almost you know had an effect on everyone so you know i would really so i thought this is something i should really go with and my parents did support me with that full on and they were like okay they in fact thought ki theek hai you know it's okay let her try maybe she chooses something else but just they gave me enough freedom to decide my career and my choices they let me be so that really helped me somewhere to decide so the switch happened very smooth and in a very natural organic way so it didn't really uh, you know i would not say because even sport played a very important part it became me stronger the working hours and every somewhere prepared me for a dance world 
I think there's a lot of content there, you know. Uh, there's discipline that you talk about. There is uh, family support that you talk about. The environment that you sort of, you know, were surrounded by. Uh, and your inclination, of course, like you said, your inspiration that you drew from everything and everybody that you looked at in Bollywood. Um, so now I'm curious, right? So because you, you use this idea of Bollywood and the fact that your dad, again, amazing, uh, happened to be a recording artist and he en ended up helping a lot of, you know, he ended up recording, sorry, a lot of these big artists. How did you realize that you didn't want to sort of be um, into dancing for in Bollywood, but rather a ballet dancer? Like, when did you realize that ballet was what you wanted to work with as an as a dance form? Because I think, say, using, like, saying ballet and then saying Bollywood dance, they're quite different in the way that they are so when did that happen so basically uh, i joined dance works and uh, the idea was just to do a western dance form but with a good technique so that was the idea so ballet actually came in little later so jazz was something that i really enjoyed and i'm sure at that age like class 11 grade 12 you know 11 12 you know you just want to be like beyonce you just want to dance like madonna and you know that's the age when you really get like your style out and you break free so uh, i was really enjoying that at dance works i was doing good and uh, yeah, and then, of course, dancers too, you know, got in ballet because then we understood that, you know, to go ahead with any dance form, ballet is very, very important. Your basics, your technique have to be like bang there. You have to work really hard to get your body there. So it became a part of me like in dance works in itself. And of course the basics happened. And then slowly after a period of time, I thought that I wanted to upgrade my knowledge towards dance. I wanted to move my, you know, level up. And I, and then when I did a lot of research, I spoke to everyone around, I saw, and that was a time when I was actually, you know, very serious about taking dancing as a career. And I was planning to even go abroad to study and, you know, pursue, and that's when uh, I was like, let's try dancing on point. Let's see how it is to be, a, you know, live a life of a ballerina. And let's see. And I thought it would be very easy. And, you know, because I was anyway dancing, like, say, 16 to 17 hours, you know, in dance works. And I was into it completely. Uh, but shifting from... A, uh, you know like a proper jazz contemporary and of course a ballet company they do offer ballet too to a proper ballet company made a lot it it seemed very easy but it was a huge jump it was something it was completely different it was completely different so the idea was to upgrade myself as a dancer and not really being a ballerina ballerina because, of course, I knew that you need a certain age and you need a certain body to be a ballerina at the end of the day. But I also wanted, I always believe that, you know, somewhere to express yourself, uh, you also need to be a universal dancer, someone who can express and just do, uh, you, you should be able to create your own thing at the end. And that's a true artist. You know, you should not be in a, you know, stuck with just one form of art, form of dancing, but you should explore and you should work with artists and see the world, what's happening. And then it's, it's, a, it's you know, different kind of, uh, you can say, it's fun, of course, but it's also a different kind of experience when you work with different people who are so into dancing. And that was why, I, and I love ballet because it has, uh, you know, made a huge difference to me as a dancer and everybody should be doing ballet for sure. So that's how my journey has been. That's the jump that has been there. So ballet did not come so easily. It was slow process, but it was around. Well, that's actually very interesting. Um, 
this then leads me to the question of um, so because you say you say that it's a journey that you've been taking for the longest period of time right you started with dance works then you moved to the imperial fernando ballet company where you sort of you know moved towards ballet as a transition eventually and you moved to the company solely because you wanted to pursue ballet so it kind of started with dance works where you did jazz contemporary and then eventually tapped into ballet and then full fledged it so i think my question is that did you face any challenges how was the journey during that time up till now as a dancer as an artist again i do want to talk about what you're doing right now but i think i would start from where you started off with in 2000 like how has the journey been so far and uh, how has your association been with both of these companies dance works and the fernando ballet company so how has your association been with both uh, dance works and the imperial fernando ballet company because i think you have a lot to talk about there as well all right so um, it's been an amazing amazing journey of course to be in a career like where you are not just physically but emotionally and mentally involved all the time physically you need so much you need to give in so much hours and to put in that hours mean like not just doing a class but just putting your soul into you know what you are doing and just connecting and disconnecting and just it takes in a lot emotionally because you're choreographing you need to connect with the piece and it's so much more about just if you want to be a soloist you need to connect with the audience and before that with yourself so if you're not connected the audience will not connect with you yeah and of course mentally you need to be so strong that it doesn't matter what's happening outside that studio or you know what's happening in your personal life it cannot affect your space at the end of the day so i think uh, to have a career like this of course uh, all careers are uh, you know they have their own way of struggle they have their own thing but i can only say about dancing that it is never easy because the first few years of your life is just investing in yourself and just struggling and uh, the more pain you take in is the higher you go you know i'll put it like that so no pain no gain is something very uh, often used in the dance world so everything counts every sweat counts you know and of course there are there were always you know things like uh, you know there was a time when you know my family was like you don't have time for anything you're just dancing and dancing and dancing and i you know like uh, and i was like but this is my time of to dance and this is my time to explore and when do you want me to explore when i turn 90 and don't worry about it i will be still dancing on stage and that would be something that i would tell my parents so now of course then they got used to it that she is someone who's not going to stop and uh, but dance works was a lot of you know of course it's my first company that i joined and i had some amazing teachers amazing i was under some great teachers who had their own identity and who taught me so many things there's nothing uh, i would say there's nothing like a bad teacher you know even a bad teacher te- uh, you know teaches you some of the biggest lessons so there's nothing like that so you at every step you will be learning something from you know like just to be good how to so dancers really helped me to overall be a very strong uh, you know dancer they taught me lot how to take uh, how to be very careful by how to organ you know do organizing and manage work all those things came in very naturally they pull, you know trained me very well into that how to take care of a studio whether it is just to make sure that the studio is looking nice little little things were taught to me there with imperial fernando ballet company i am extremely lucky because i had i think one of the best teachers uh, mr fernando of course he has been someone who has taught me 
that uh, how to get up when you fall each time. He's taught me how to be brave and that's what stayed with me. So a teacher, a good teacher, when uh, it's very important to have a good teacher in your life who makes sure that uh, when you fall, he believes in you so much that you keep coming up, you keep getting up and move on and keep moving and don't stop. So something and like uh, I also learned how to be so professional when comes to everything like just uh, like maybe it's records or taking classes I'm never late for my class I'm always at least half an hour before my class and those qualities that have come in naturally is taught by my teacher so that is something that I learned and Whatever I have learned from all my teachers, I have like collected and I've been, and you know, as an artist, it's, it's also my duty to spread it around, you know, spread the joy of dancing. It's not just moving your hands and legs, but it's also so much more. So yeah, that's what I am doing. So whatever I have learned from my teachers, I'm just passing on and spreading out, you know, to spread the joy. That's what I'm doing. I think that's beautiful, Meha. One thing that I definitely uh, will like to appreciate about you is that you have amazing resilience. I mean, going from 2000 up till now and continuing to do what you love doing the most um, is something that I think I will have to appreciate and respect about you. Um, I have a very interesting question now because you also kind of talked about it. It's the, it's the part where you said spreading joy. So tell us a little bit about dance art. Uh, it's an initiative started in 2018 and, you know, it has gained a lot of popularity. It offers jazz, contemporary. It is also offering ballet lessons. So tell us a, a little bit about where you started this initiative. And, you know, how did you come up with the idea of starting it in the first place? Uh, so I always had this in, like when I started dancing and when I became very serious about dancing, I always wanted to have my own company and uh, something which is where, uh, but I wasn't really clear about what kind of company would I would want to have. So, but yeah, definitely that was like, you know, in my bucket list where I, that I will definitely have my own dance company one day. And, uh, uh and soon again, uh, you know, it was the right time in 2018 that I thought that it was now time to, you know, make that start. I think I, I was, I wanted to spread that. I also, I wanted to have a company of my own, which, like I said, I believe in making universal dancers. Someone who are good in ballet, they are good in uh, jazz, they should be able to express, you know, while it's contemporary, they should be able to just dance, you know, they should not be like, oh, I am just a ballet dancer, so I can't do jazz or I can't do Bollywood. They should not get stuck with one form of dancing because at the end of the day, dance teaches you how to express yourself out and how to connect. So all these dance forms at the end teach you the same thing and that is connecting, expressing and how to really, you know, it's a different kind of connection at the end of the day. So, so that's how me and a friend of mine thought that why not, let's open. And of course, I wanted someone who can I, I can trust and open a company with. So we started this and... Uh, it's doing fantastic and we are making amazing uh, we are making amazing amazing dancers and they are free they can do any style it is very important for them to do technique to learn everything we also uh, educate them with dancing i think that's very very important to, for today that uh, you need to be upgraded every time. You need to keep studying dance and it's not ki is level pe aake padhai chhodi. It's nothing like that. You still need to, you know, meet artists. You still need to upgrade yourself may, just by history of ballet or just jazz. So I keep updating myself. I made sure, like I recently did Martha Graham 
school course like the summer intensive i'm also doing going to do like the you know uh, like the october course so i keep upgrading myself to be a better dancer and it is so much fun to just meet different teachers around the world and connect with them and you never know what they teach you and how you connect and sometimes you are like oh i never tried this so even the choreographies you know they change and they upgrade and it's so much fun i i don't think uh, i have loved dancing uh, like uh, in a this in this way ever before because it's a very interesting phase of my life where i am just doing everything and of course my students are growing with me so that is the best part so that's how dance art has happened and uh, it's going smooth uh, it's it's uh, it's nice to see your students uh, and i always say that if even one person can become me or maybe someone i will be so happy you know and the idea is to just give all my students one win in their life and that's what i say so that they it's not that they want to you know they have to be a dancer wherever they go wherever whatever career they choose uh i can just teach them to be honest i can just teach them to be good human and that i think is when you connect with yourself dancing can teach you a lot of these things too so if i can just teach them how to be uh, true to themselves how to be brave brave is something that i always say dance has taught me um uh, brave enough to take risks brave enough to take challenges brave enough to fall and get up again in life if i could just teach my students how to be brave in their life i think i am that's it i will be such a good teacher so while we dance we are teaching them all that too so dance art is a lot than just a ballet class or a jazz or a contemporary class it's uh, where we are actually making sure all our kids are growing you know overall and not just with what it looks like so yes it's it's been wonderful wonderful uh, it's going smooth it's a wonderful journey uh so you mentioned a little bit about educating yourself in dance art right so you say that you're educating yourself constantly you're growing you're evolving you're learning so um education is a word that um it has rarely been used with respect to dance particularly right so tell us a little bit about what education means in the field of dance according to you all right so uh i think for any career you need an education to go to a level so it is very important that in dancing also you need to know your roots you need to know about uh, if you're learning ballet you need to know where it all began with and what was the origin your history your the artists who have influenced and changed the world the impact they have made it's i think it's very important to study it's also about upgrading yourself with the syllabus because there are beautiful teachers around the world who are making and upgrading the syllabus every time and it's and i'm sure their experiences when they're making a syllabus they have they are putting in their hard work and their syllabus and they have thought about it and they have connected so i think it is very important it's not just about doing a plie but it's also important to know why did it started and what was the idea behind it and where you can take it forward you never know uh, you might make a change and there might you be you would be the next one who's changing the world in dance so taking that it is very important to be educated right so uh, today if i know that where did it all where did you know jazz begin with what was charleston what was disco how is hip hop coming up you know what was a cake walk you know all these things what 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 was swing and and how did commercial jazz come up if you know the history of it you will be more connected with your study and uh, you know 
you will be expressing better in your dancing. Same goes with ballet, same goes with contemporary. Why is contemporary so grounded? Why is, more, why is it in a flow? I think if you study about these things, you will definitely become a better dancer and you never know, you change the world of dance. So education plays a very, very ro important role in, you know, and upgrading especially makes, makes a lot of difference to you as an artist. So I think it plays a very, very important role. Um, thank you so much for that. I think a couple of things that I really found useful and interesting, which I would like to repeat again, um, are the fact that it's very important to understand the historical reference of everything that you perform and practice. I think the history matters a lot because there is a purpose to everything that you do today. And the purpose has evolved with time, of course, but there, has, there is a beginning to it. And it's important to understand the beginning so that you can make amendments, you can tweak it and twist it and, you know, maybe create something very amazing out of whatever learnings you've gathered over the years. But it's important for you to first understand where it all began in order for you to do justice to it in the future as well. Um, I think I got that part right. I hope I got that part right. <laughs> um, I think it's very important. And those are some wise words, Meha. Um, it's very important for us artists to remember to study a little bit about the history. But I have a question for you and I think it's very relevant as well today because you talk about the idea of syllabus, creating and designing syllabus. Now syllabus is something that is used in a very um, educational space as in, in a school, a college or a university. Do you think you create syllabus for your classes at dance art as well? Is that something that you do? Yes, so uh, there is a proper syllabus that we follow. So I follow the Wagamua Russian style syllabus and it, it gets keep upgrading. And that's how you need to, you know, that's why even I do my classes to be sure about what. So, you know, the information is traveling through your teachers. You're still learning and then it's going down. So like I said before, that there are beautiful teachers around the world who are creating syllabus. And when you're doing their classes, you are upgraded about, okay, this is what is being changed in the syllabus. And this is how we are going. And they do explain why is it changed. Maybe it can be because of the body, or maybe it's the best way, or maybe they have, you know, their experience of working with different bodies makes them a part of that. Also, it is very, at dance art, we do that. I make the syllabus and that's how it goes, follows. And also, uh, we invite instructors, we invite teachers to our academy to give special classes, to talk to our students. And, uh, you know, because it's very important for students to also be training under different teachers because every teacher has its own way of teaching and explaining and taking class and putting their little, you know, themselves forward when it comes to dancing and just the knowledge of just being on stage and standing is different for everyone, every teacher. So in dance art, we make sure we have guest instructors coming in who are sharing their, you know, things with they share their syllabus and that's how it is, that, how, that is how it should be, you know? So growth is not something that uh, is like, uh, of course, it, it, it does make a lot of uh, difference to have a good syllabus and an upgraded syllabus with you. So, uh, and the best thing is to, for a teacher is also to be doing his study, continuing his study and, you know, lessons and just connecting with the world. So that is something is part is very natural and it is a part of every teacher or a dancer's life. All right. So um, based on what you've just said, I have another question for you because you just recently told us that you also work as a dance educator at Shivnadu school, right? Um, what is your experience like over there? And, um, is being a dance educator in a school space different from a dance educator in a company like yours in dance art? Is there a difference in the way that you teach? Um, and also what happens or what changes when you move from one style of teaching to the other? 
because I know that in a school space, the teaching methodology is quite different from what the way you teach in a company space because expectations change and what you deliver at the ground level also varies. So tell us a little bit about your education style and uh, how you're coping with it. Okay, so uh, the thing is that, of course, it is a very different space when it comes to teaching in a school and uh, teaching in a company, which is just, uh, you know, focusing on the dance front. Uh, but uh, I think it is, it is uh, like I said, you as an artist or as an educator, you need to be very open about uh, like you should, it's also about your personal growth and learning. So it is important to, uh, you know, experience. So the reason why I also joined the school space was to know, thankfully, uh, the education system is changing and it is, it gives a lot of weightage now to the arts. The integration is happening and it is compulsory and we have like progressive schools who are taking it very very you know seriously and they are also upgrading and they need good teachers art teachers to make a difference and make an impact on the education system so it is wonderful to see first of all that you know art is playing a very very important role in all the progressive schools it's a uh, it's something that is getting connected and is something that is getting appreciated by everyone. And you can definitely see that jump and that, uh, the, you know, the growth of the child definitely changes. So the child is no more, you know, just, uh, you know, just reading and learning, but it's also thinking out of the box because of integration of arts in their regular studies. And, uh, that's, I think, one of the best things that is happening right now at an education level. It is definitely very different when it comes to, uh, you know, of course, there are some guidelines and there are some things that you have to follow. But at the end of the day, the base, uh, the things like connecting with audience, connecting with yourself, expressing yourselves, stay the basic principles are the same. So you are still what you're teaching in your own space, uh, like the fundamentals, the foundation that you're making strong is the same everywhere. The, the, maybe it's your academy or maybe it's a school. You're teaching the same foundation. You know, you're teaching the same thing to your students to be honest with yourself and respect art forms. It's not just dancing, but also the other things. You're teaching them that how it plays an important role in just in anything. You might uh, be a doctor tomorrow, but at the end of the day, a doctor should also be respecting an art form. So, and an artist, because they also making an impact and changing the world with you. So I think the base and the foundation remains the same. So yes, of course, there is a little difference. You are integrating with their subjects, their, what they are learning. And I think that just adds value to your, uh, you know, studies. So there is a bit of change, but at the end of the day, you're just making them better artists. You're just making them uh, feel the world of dance is beautiful. And uh, if they want to take it forward, why not? It's a best, it is one of the best careers because every time you're just doing so much more, you have everything in it. So I, I, it's, it's a very good time for education. Thank you, Meha. I think uh, talking about integrated arts in educational space, also what the national education policy in 2020 talks about, um, sort of brings us to this, um, the end of this discussion today. Um, but before we finish, because we have sort of come through and through and discussed everything that you've experienced, um, what are some of the things that you really would like the upcoming artists, the ones who are currently pursuing their uh, interest in dance and hoping to become uh, future artists, anything that you would like to talk about? And also maybe just give us a little bit of, uh, on the entrepreneurial side of your journey, because even that is part of your dance career at the moment. 
anything that you would like to tell. So I just want to say, number one, that just be yourself, believe in yourself. And I know this is something that, you know, you must be hearing so many times when it, uh, you know, everybody keeps saying, believe in yourself and, uh, you know, just be, uh, you know, just be what you think, do that. I don't want to say all that. What I really want all the artists to know is, uh, you know, passion really takes you a long way in life and don't, uh, you know, no matter how much is happening in your personal life, don't get it, get affected. Just be yourself, believe in yourself. Passion will take you through. If you have it in you, nobody can stop you from doing that, what you are good at. So, and definitely have a good teacher, a good mentor, select a good teacher, good mentor for yourself, because at the beginning, a good mentor and teacher will make your foundation very strong. And that's what I did. I, I am very grateful and thankful to all my teachers who invested in me, who believed in me. And because of them, uh, I sit here in front of you. And be brave. And I say this for myself, and that's what I'll share, that we dance brave. Uh, brave enough to take risks. Brave enough to fall and get up again. Brave enough to just, you know, not listening to everyone and just doing what you really believe in. And just be brave and be smiling and just love yourself for what you are. Don't judge yourself don't listen to all uh, the things what, you know, sometimes there are people who pull you down, but just, you know, listen to yourself and you will know where to go. So, yes, these are the things that I will leave you with uh, about the, you know, having your own company or being an entrepreneur comes really late in, uh, you will know the right time. If you are passionate enough and you think that you are, brave enough you will definitely have your own way it's not just about and there are it's you will be ready when you know you it will come from you like uh, there was a time i always knew that i want to open my company but i did i was not sure uh, when and how and why so these answers come with experience and with the time with your journey, you will just come to know there will be an inner voice which will just say, I think, Neha, you know, this is the time now. You should like go forward with it. So you yourself will know. Also, there are a lot of hats that you play. You, you know, take care when it when you talk about entrepreneurship. There is you have to take care about everyone around you. You have to make sure everybody is growing with you. It's not just about your growth. It's about everybody's growth. Of course, you are learning and teaching your students, but it's also your partner. It's also your people, your staff, your assistant. Everybody should have uh, enough space of growth. They should be motivated. And I use this word, everybody should be edified. It's not just me. It's the whole team that makes, uh, you know, it possible. It's not just the head. It's, it's not about the head. It's also about a student doing the best plie in your class. That makes a lot of difference. So you have to take care about everything. Even the person who is just, you know, say cleaning your studio has to be edified and taken care of. His growth should also matter to you. And that's how, you know, that's how a perfect family happens. You're making sure everybody is happy. And that's how we work in dance art. We take care of each other. So yes, you have to wear a lot of hats and you, and it's a lot. Sometimes you are stressed, but you don't have to share that out with your other people you just have to make sure they are happy and doing their work so yes thank you so much we have that for that amazing discussion and conversation um thank you so much everybody may have for you
um i hope that all of you have learned something in this session today and i'll see you all again at movement and me with another interview thank you everybody bye meha thank you thank, thank you, you so much thank you thank you all for tuning into movement and me an initiative that is designed for budding artists across the world to continue receiving notifications on our latest episode please subscribe to our youtube channel natya mandalam or look us up on apple podcast or spotify for more information i'm your host niharika and i'll see you all next